Hi. There's a lot of unrest, isn't there? There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of unhappiness within the Blackpool family. And I've not said anything and I feel I need to say something. And I hope, you know, what I say resonates with, with everyone. I've read BST's reply uh, from the SLO this morning to the fans forum I watched the Seasiders podcast. Um, I listened to what Raggy had to say, and I've got to agree with just about everything he said. Um, I'll start off, first of all with you know, his Churchillian speech, as they say, which was which was good, and and kind of said a lot of things that I agree with. The first thing he said that um, he didn't want the Blackpool fans comparing Simon Sadler to the Oystens, and I don't think many of us do in reality, compare Simon Sadler to the Oysters because it's just two totally different things. And the hatred that we had for the, the Oysters, we don't have for Simon Sadler. Everybody th that I speak to, and myself and Jane, we all want Simon Sadler to succeed. We all want him to do well. We all want to be behind him. We all want to hear more from him. And we all want to know what's going on in the bigger picture of, you know, how we're developing as a club, how we're going forward, is this, when's the stand starting? When's the training ground starting? Although they're not the main priorities. The main priorities, I think for most Blackpool fans, me included, is just the football. It's as simple as that. It all boils down to that one thing. And it's all about the enjoyment of going to a, a of, of paying your money to be a season ticket holder or, coming for the odd game or whatever, it's all down to the football. I was thinking back to when Brett Ormrod, the first time when he started really shining, was banging in goals for fun. And then we, obviously we sold him to Southampton. But at that moment, when Brett Ormrod was, was like unbelievable and he was banging in goals every week and... You couldn't get in. You could not get into Bloomfield Road. I can't remember what, what the capacity was then when it was at seven and a half or 8,000 or something like that. It was, But you couldn't get in because the buzz was going around the town that this young lad was like worth coming down to see and watch. And, and that's what gets people to go and watch football matches. And a lot of the things that we're doing at the moment uh, as, as, as a club just doesn't really matter. To anybody, it doesn't certainly doesn't matter to me. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered whether there's a fans forum. I'm not bothered, you know, whether we include all these minority groups as, as separate things. I just feel that we're all Blackpool fans. I'm not bothered whether you're LBTQ, whether you're black, whether you're Hispanic, whether you're Asian, whether you're female, whether you're male, whether you're a, you know Native American Indian and Eskimo. I'm not bothered i just you, we're all blackpool fans and we all want the same thing we all want to see success we all want to be up near the top we all want to be going to watch football that's entertaining we all want to go and see a team that gets on the pitch and does a 110 percent effort to win a game and try and win a game and games like the last one we saw against oxford where blackpool tried you know really hard to win that game and you know, you came out, even though we didn't win it, you came out positive. But then obviously everything's kicked off again because we've lost again away at Cheltenham. And you just watch everything, you know, that Critch has said in his interview for a start off where, you know, he's basically saying, if I'd have known what to change during the game, I would have changed it. And I'm thinking, my God, if you don't know yet, Critch, what you need to change to win a match away, then what the hell? You know, you've only got to watch them on... You've only got to sit down with a video with the players and watch that game and to see what you did wrong and how it's not working because you just keep doing the same thing. I mean, you know, I, I went to Bolton and we passed it around the back and we lost it and they scored and we lost. I went, you know, to Burton Albion. They, they came at us for 10 minutes and scored a goal, which was the weakest, garbage goal I've ever seen, a cross that everybody missed, went in, and then we just didn't even try to win the... We didn't try. <laughs> we just hardly had a shot on target. We didn't do anything to change it. You know, we didn't have anybody, like, you know, to change the system. 
We seem to change, you know, and people keep saying it, we change players. So we take a striker off, we put a striker on, we take a midfielder off, we put a midfielder on, we took a right back off, we put a right back on. But we still continue playing that same way that isn't working away from home. And, you know, you, you could tell really from the body language of the players that I don't think they're, they're convinced that the system works. It, it looks like that to me, that they're not really with it. Like none of us are really. And um, I think, you know, for most teams can can watch all the defeats that we've had. They can watch the videos before the players and the managers can just say, oh, well, there we go. That's how to beat them, you know, just press them, hit everything long, chase every, close them down everywhere you can, win the second ball, put pressure on that defence because they can't pass it around the back. And just force them all the time to keep going backwards and hoofing the ball up. And then we just pick it up and it just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse. You just watch it. And you kind of know, don't you, within 10 minutes that we're not going to win. You know, it's, and yeah, at home, we're pretty good. So I'd like, we all want to see that. We all want to see football that's, you know, that's that a winning, you know, a winning kind of football. We don't, who wants to go away at the moment, really? You know, somebody's asked me, when's your video coming out? I'm not going away to watch, to watch that garbage. I'm not going to spend £100 to go and watch that. You know, I just, I haven't got that much money to throw away. And I, and, and I don't want to go and spend money to be miserable. And this is the problem at the moment. Nobody wants to spend money being miserable and being, you know, not entertained. That's the most important thing. All this, you know... I'm not bothered whether they're not five pence off a pie. I'm not bothered whether um, we get better pies. I, I'm not bothered whether I'm not bothered about any of those things. I'm not bothered about a Moretti lounge or a Heineken lounge. I'm not bothered about those things. I'm not going to go in corporate. I'm not interested in that. I just like most fans, you go and you sit or you stand in the stands and you, you enjoy the noise and the atmosphere and you enjoy watching attacking football, you know, where we're actually going for it. And, and when we go for it, when we actually do attack teams, we're, we're really good. We are, we can play some of the best football I've seen in years. And yet it's like, it's like we don't do it. You know, we don't carry on doing that for the whole game. And it's so frustrating, you know, seeing a few games. I mean, Jane's a big fan of, of Critchley, you know, she really likes him. And yet, you know, you've seen on videos where she's thinking about, uh, you know, what she's going to make for tea. And, you know, the one video where she's, she's so bored, she's falling asleep <laughs> on me. And that's how it is. It's, it's just, that's how it is. And it, it, sh it, that is not going to improve the football club. The way you improve the football club is have thousands of people locked out who want to come and see it because it's so good. And the atmosphere is so great. And it's amazing when you go there and it's an experience and the whole place is bouncing. Uh, and it's not, is it? It's not that. It's it's a struggle. It's a struggle. The, the North Stand, to the credit, I've got it going the last couple of games because it's been a little bit exciting. But we all know how good the atmosphere at Bloomfield Road can be. We've all been there, you know, that year where we were, promo you know, the year of, of, of promotion and the year in the Premier League. We know how, how amazing it was. Even, you know, even the season after, you know, in the champion, back in the championship, Bloomfield Road, it was so loud, man. It was unbelievable. And it's it's our, it's our sort of, you know, our, our USP that, 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 that for the amount of people that go, we make more noise than ever. Any club, I mean, we went away last season to every single championship game, and there wasn't a stadium. There wasn't one stadium that could could hold a torch to Bloomfield Road. They were all pretty much like morgues. You got a Bloomfield Road, and it used to be bouncing, but now we're getting away fans singing. You know, is this a library and all this? Because because it's not how it was, and that's because of the one thing, the one thing that matters. There's only there's there's one thing, one thing as an owner you have to get right and you have to be doing things and looking like you're doing things that are going to make that one thing right and the one thing is the football if you don't get the football right 
You've nothing. It doesn't. You, you can build Moretti lounges. You can build Heineken lounges. You can improve the Tannoy system. You can get a new e stand. But if the football's garbage, if the football's rubbish, and people are bored, and people are not engaging and watching football, that's not entertaining, not exciting. People will not go and you won't fill your Moretti lounges and you won't fill your Heineken lounges and you won't, people don't care about the entertainment on the pitch at half time or, or anything. It's just about the football. And also you want the place to be welcoming and you want it to be a, a place that you want to go to and it's all becoming a little bit like, you know, just for instance, they seem to be more obsessed with whether you've got a bottle top on your water in the South Stand than, than the football. They seem more obsessed with that to me. That's that's like a, that, they are obsessed with that. And I've sat in the South Stand for as, as long as I can remember, even back in the old South Stand. And I don't ever really remember ever anybody throwing a, a, a bottle on the, on the pitch from the South Stand. And I don't remember it from the West Stand. I don't. And I don't think over the last, literally, I, somebody may correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't remember ever seeing any missile thrown onto the pitch from the West or the South Stand. I can't remember it ever. Ever. Yes, there has been things thrown from the North Stand and... I always thought we had CCTV and they'd be able to see who, who threw it from that. And they would, if you throw stuff on the pitch, you deserve a ban. If you run on the pitch, you know, you deserve, you, sh you should get a ban. It's as simple as that. Those things are things that I would never do. I would never, ever in my life consider throwing a bottle. I would never, ever consider running on the pitch, in even in a goal celebration. I've done it at the end of the season sometimes where everybody's run on the pitch and it's been, you know, everybody on the pitch kind of exciting thing. But, but actually running on the pitch or throwing missiles or coins or anything like that, I would say that's 99.999 recurring percent of fans would, would, would never do that. So why we're being searched, going into the South Stand or going into the West Stand, it just, the whole thing's pointless. And, and anyway, the whole searching thing is, is garbage because if anybody wants to get a blooming something in, they're going to stick it down their underpants and nobody's ever going to search them there, are they? I mean, they wouldn't be allowed to. So it's a pointless exercise. Wherever they're searching you for where things might be, that they never find because there isn't anything in these places where they're, they're just not there. So what's the point of it? It's just a, it's a, it's, it's a box ticking exercise. That's all it is. And it's uncomfortable and it's... It's not engaging and it's not welcoming and you don't want to go. And if they're taking drinks off little kids as they're going into the stands and everything, and what are you doing? It just, man, what are you doing to your fan base? These are the people that come and pay the money because they love Blackpool Football Club. You know, these are the people, all those people in the South, all the people in the West, you know, the vast majority, 99 point, probably... 9% of the North Stand are just the same. There's the odd idiot here and there. But most Blackpool fans are just normal people. And they're right behind you, you know, and they want to be behind you, but you're making it so uh, it, it's a place you don't want to go. You know, you don't want to go. You don't feel welcome. You don't feel comfortable. It, you know, it's not the same as it used to be. It's, you know, and... You feel a little bit like as a fan, as if you're the enemy, you know, as if we are the enemy. Well, we're not. We're not the enemy. Everybody wants the club to succeed and Simon Sadler to, to succeed. But I agree. There's, you know, the engagement that we're asking for, the engagement that fans are asking for is not for a fans forum represented by minority groups selected by the club. That's not what we're at. We're not asking for that. That's not the communication that we need. What we need to hear is like, what the heck is going on? What's the, what are we doing to get to wherever we want to go? I mean, the January transfer window, I know it's the worst transfer window and it's hard, but you know, there's, there was like one player, wasn't there? There was one player the, the news was quite exciting, wasn't it? Because it was like Blackpool have put uh, like a like a huge bid in, you know, uh, 
and astonish, whatever it was, but it's not quite enough to get him this 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 low, this defender low. Six foot five, probably what we needed. So we make this offer that's that doesn't that, that's rejected. But that's it. D did we get? Do we know? <laughs> Does anybody know? Do we know how much we put in? No, we don't. So, so how much was it? Was it a was it a large amount? Was it a, was it not a really large amount? Do we believe that it was a large amount? And do we believe that they were really that bothered about trying to to buy somebody? Because surely then the next thing would have been to put a bit of a higher bid and and, and try and you know wrestle wrestle him away in business and try and get him for as as little as you can, but as much as you need to to make the deal go go across. But but do we know how far out we were? <laughs> we don't know anything. We just don't know anything. We just have this headline, don't we? Like, oh, Blackpool put this bid in and it's not been accepted. It's been rejected. And it was a big bid. It was a huge bid. It was a bid that was unbelievable. But we've no idea because there's never any communication. In fact, we're probably one of the only clubs, I don't know how many clubs, everything is for an undisclosed amount. And, you know, most clubs are blooming and say, oh, we bought this player for 5 million. We bought him for 10 million. <laughs> We never tell any. We don't tell anybody anything. I'm not saying we have the right to know all the ins and outs, but just the things that kind of give us a bit of hope, maybe along the way, you know, you know, let us in a little bit so we feel like you're doing stuff that's going to take us somewhere. I mean, I also, um, you know, Raggy in his uh, Churchillian speech said that, um, you know, he wants to believe Simon Sadler that he's going to, Bill is a training ground and he's going to get this East Stand Bill. He, he wants to believe it, but at the moment, he doesn't believe it. And I think that's, you know, that's what I was saying last year. You know, I was saying almost a year ago now, I was saying that the training ground isn't happening and it still isn't happening, is it? It's, <laughs> it might happen. I'm not, I'd like to believe that it will happen, but at this moment in time, it's not happening. We're still waiting. What, what did they say? They, they put the application in March 2023. So it's nearly a year. And we're no nearer. And we're no nearer. It just, as much as you want to believe, it just seems like the same old bollocks that we've been hearing for 30 years over, over it all, doesn't it? It just seems like the exactly same same stories that we've been hearing. And until we start seeing, you know, digger demolishing companies coming in and start to knock down street houses on Henry Street and we can see it's all happening and until that it's just pie it's just pie in the sky it's nothing it's just it's just a nothing and we need to know is it going to be something and and some some proof that it's going to be something because everything that's kind of the proof is just a nothing it's just a nothing it's just a, an artist diagram that that isn't even like what it's going to look like really is it because it's you know, even the, the artist's diagram is like just the, the half with the other half made to look like something it can't possibly look like, really. Because it can't. It can't look. The, it can't be an, a full circle looking identical on both sides because it's not, you know, the roof lines and all the rest of it. I don't know. It's, it's not going to be that. So at the moment, you know, there's nothing happened, is there? And, and since... And since the club has kind of gone into this decline, demise, you know, relegation, all the rest of it. When everything was going forward, it all started going backwards when Simon Sadler said that he has to build a training ground and there's so many million for that and there's so many million for a, for a new stand and the costs have gone up and everything and he, he, he doesn't have the budget to do all that and also to, you know, improve the squad. And since that moment... We have been going backwards. You know, we, we, we have been going backwards since that statement. It, and it, it's quite evident that they haven't got the money to, to spend on players or anybody. I mean, okay, I don't know how much they're paying for roads and all the rest of it. And we have a bit of bad luck with that. But at the end of the day, there doesn't seem to be any ambition. You know, we sign these players, these young players that seem to go into the development squad, but they don't, you know, they don't come through, you know, they just don't come through. We have Rob Apter, who is doing really well at Tramia Rovers, but we don't, he's not good enough for us, and yet he's our player. 
I don't know. It just, it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. It's a mixed bag this season, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's been great at times. We've put on some great performances. We've lost important players again, like we always do. You know, Kenny Dougal leaving when it, just when he was starting to play really, really well. You know, Jordan Rhodes getting his rib in, you know, his ribs, cracking his ribs. You know, we're not getting a lot of luck again. You know, we're not getting a lot of luck, but I still think we've got enough players in this team, really, a, a good enough team still to to get in. You know, we should be in the, the playoffs, really. And that's purely because most of them have been playing in the championship. So... No, they should be good enough to go to places like Cheltenham and win. I'm, I'm not. It's nothing against Cheltenham, but they're down at the bottom of the league for a reason. You know, what I mean, it's just never mind the fact that you, you know, the year before we're going to Sheffield United, you know, big crowd, big ground. You're going to Sunderland, massive ground. Norwich, big ground. Blackburn, big ground. Burnley, you know, big ground. Go to all these clubs. Middlesbrough, you know, all these clubs could be in the Premier League and and, and, and they're like intimidating places. Like you think, oh, wow, you know, playing in front of a big, massive stadium like this. You go to like Cheltenham and no disrespect to Cheltenham, but it looks like a non-league ground to me. It's just with not many there, you, you can't be going there thinking this is an intimidating ground to go to. Burton Albion was not intimidating in the slightest. There wasn't even 4,000 there. It was... Now, there might have just been about 4,000. They were on a terrible run. There wasn't a lot of buzz there. And yeah, we go there like as if we're, as if we're terrified. You know, we look like we we're terrified, clueless. We didn't do anything to change the way we played. It was just awful. And um, it is at the moment, just, just at times, really awful. And it's not working. It's, we don't seem comfortable playing this three at the back thing. We don't. We just don't look comfortable at all. We have a we have a goalkeeper that you know, and I don't want to single people out because at times he's, he's brilliant, and I you know I, I quite like Grimmy and everything else, but he don't really command his box, does he? He doesn't. You know, we're letting in corners. We've just let we've just lost. To, you know, we've just got a draw at Bloomfield Road because of a corner, just a soft, easy corner, and then we you know we go to Cheltenham and again score from a corner and it's just it's like you know I watched O'Donnell in 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 the cup and to be honest with you corner comes across he's out he's getting it you know what I mean he's out up get the damn thing get the ball like any any big goalkeeper just up get the ball you've got a height on everybody uh, every player around you can't jump as high as you can get you can jump with your hands up in the air and catch it so you got to be confident but he, he came out and he caught it and there's quite a lot of times he just throws the ball out really quick and gets us on the attack and we don't have that with Grimshaw he, he, he doesn't go for those he, I mean he did a punch didn't he he did a punch <laughs> which was just was it I think that probably the worst punch of any goalkeeper I've ever seen in my life it was like Oh my God, he punched it about five, five foot forward. It went straight to them, didn't it? And when we got away with it, he managed to pull a wonder save off, didn't he, after that to get it away. And he saved the penalty, you know, but it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't really matter if he saved the penalty. We still lost 2-0. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't think, I don't think he's really commanding enough. And I think that's what we need. We need a commanding. And I sometimes think, you know, when, when you look at it, you know, we went to that cup game and o O'Donnell was 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 man of the match. He had to be man of the match. He was he pulled off about I don't know four or five like wonder saves. He was commanding. He, he saved two penalties. It was like the game of his life. And he doesn't get a chance, you know. He doesn't he don't put him in. And I'd be thinking if I was O'Donnell, I'd think, well, what 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 do I need to do? What do I need to do to be you know, to be to, to be the number one goalkeeper. I can't do any better than that. I can't have a better game than that in my life. That is like that is like my best game ever. And I just I just I don't understand why he didn't play him. I know Grimshaw's number one, but you gotta say, look, I'm just gonna give this lad a chance to see how he goes. And if if he can't do it at you know in the next game, then 
you back him, but I can't really drop him. You understand, you know, goalkeepers, I can't drop him because he's, he's man of the match. He's, he's pulled off all these saves and saved penalties and I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with him, and, you know, what I would have done anyway. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on things at the moment. I think there's lots of things that need fixing. I don't think this Seasiders Together is is really Seasiders Together. I think it's more Seasiders Divided, if I'm being honest. It just feels like we're dividing the fan base. <laughs> we're not putting us together. We're classing us all as all these different factions of people, you know, from women to LBTQ to Asians to blacks to, say, native Red Indians, Chinese, bloody... I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's just like, you know, we have these fans groups, don't we? And, you know, they're, 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 they're pretty good. And uh, they get the message to most of their group. And they seem to be the ones that get the most feedback from their groups, you know. So let's say, for instance, there are, I don't know how many there are, say there are, Say there's a thousand BST members. And let's say, let's, for argument's sake, we'll say there's a thousand muckers as well, right? So there's a mucker supporters group and BST, a thousand and a thousand, right? So they go to a meeting and then they have to put the minutes down and they have to write to all their members. So a, a newsletter goes out, or whatever, to a thousand people. And they all get the message and they were all there and, and they were represented by one or two fans, all those thousand people. Then you have a group of um, Asian fans. How many Asian fans do we have? <laughs> How many are there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I can't say I've ever noticed that many Asians at Bloomfield Road. But may, let's maybe say there are twenty. Twenty. So yeah, so there's, there's twenty of those. So so they go to a meeting and, and and they have two one person, and they can send a newsletter out to the twenty people. It doesn't go anywhere, does it? it doesn't 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 go. There's no depth to it. And then you've got like, okay, so then you've got the female fans represented. Well, you know we all know that women are coming more to football now. There's more women in the stadium than they used to be, but still. As a percentage of the crowd, it's not the main, you know, the main demographic of, of, of people still at football is men. You know, it, it just is. It's, it, it's, it's never going to be equal. It's, there's never going to be as, as many women as there are men, but they're always going to be in a, a minority. And then some of those women are already in BST and they might already be in the muckers. So do they need... I don't know. Is that important? Is any of that important? Or, you know, will you tell me right in the comments, you know, just in the comments below, what do you, as a Blackpool Football Club fan, do you want to see? What's important to you? Put it in the comments below. Is it, is it the fact that there's a forum and, <laughs> and these supporters groups beat the club and go through the same sort of thing every time it doesn't really do anything or it's of no in it's a, I'll be honest it's of no interest to me whatsoever I'm on I'm only bothered about the football watching a team win getting promoted seeing exciting football that's it so are you more interested in you know whether we should or shouldn't have a bottle on your water or whether you think the pies, uh, you know, could be improved or the PA system or are you more bothered about being entertained when, when you come to the football? You know? Don't know. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I've rambled on. Uh, no doubt I'll be, <laughs> I'll be called in by the club for saying things I shouldn't say, but that's that's just my my opinion. It, it's my opinion, I, and you know you're entitled to disagree with me or agree with me. But this that's my opinion. So, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.